Listen, uh, what we're going to learn today is uh, how and what kind of objections we will have uh, during uh, our life and our uh, job as a, as a real. Okay? So, um, the I'm sorry, but guys, I don't have a clicker. Okay? So, overcoming objections is first of all a state of mind. And I'll tell you the truth, it happens to me sometimes too. Okay? Sometimes I'm there, I'm thinking of something else, I receive the phone call, or uh, I'm talking, I'm, I'm really not paying attention. So they tell me, oh, I have a realtor, or this or that. I say, oh, okay, it happens to me. Why? Because it is a state of mind. You have to be ready for it. You have to prepare yourself for it. So uh, many people do it in different ways. For example, I like to uh, listen to some music, Gil does too. It's different music from what uh, uh, Gil listens, you know, obviously mine. Um, but uh, uh, it's one that pumps you up, you know, makes you ready, makes the blood flow, all right? And plus, your knowledge. So during these classes, that's when you get your knowledge. There is also several uh, scripts that you can use uh, to further uh, get more knowledge. Um, now, <coughs> so you have to be sure that when you are making phone calls, when you're talking to somebody, you are really ready to overcome the objection. The objections, they always will be there. That even though I'm talking to another agent, either that I'm talking to a buyer, a seller, I will always have, uh, and sometimes are within the transaction itself, right? So we will have some. Uh, um, so right now what we're going to go through is some points and some things. Obviously we cannot go over every objection because there are many, 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 many objections from the seller side, from the buyer side, from other real estate agents doing a transaction. There are many, many transactions that we'll find now. So we're going to address a few of them, okay? Uh, now to start with, I would like to show you one that I particularly like uh, especially when I do the training with my agents, uh, this one. And uh, I would like to know from you guys if you have any idea how to answer to this. I, se I will sell my home when the value of the house will go up. Anybody has an idea how to say the answer to this? So the first thing I will do in this case <coughs> is you need to do some discovery. Right? What's he going to do next? I mean, you're selling your house, and then what? Are you buying again? Are you renting? Are you buying in state, out of state? You know, all these things you need to know. So you need to uh, uh, do some discovery when you have an answer like that. Uh, now, I saw on some other uh, scripts that this is a kind of question that has no answer. I completely disagree on that, okay? Actually, my agents will laugh about it because it's a little bit more complicated. You have to think a little bit more. And this is the thing. Really, when you answer your objections, you are, have to think and use your knowledge to overturn it, okay? So some are more simple. They are more standard answers. But some, uh, really, you have to play with numbers. You have to uh, 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 know the market and all these things, okay? So if, they, if they're going to rent, and so my question would be, you know, are you going to buy, are you going to rent once you sold this house? Uh, are you going to stay in state, out of state? Why am I asking all that? Because if I rent, if they rent, I have one answer. So I have to, to overturn the renting mentality a purchase mentality, right? So why would you buy, why would you rent when at this time with the interest rates that we have, you know, your, your mortgage, including your insurance and taxes, will be less than what you will be renting for. Plus, you're still building equity in the house. Why would you rent? You'll be paying somebody else's mortgage. Right? So that's why I have to ask these questions. I have to know what, what is in their mind, correct? To, to be able to answer. 
So sometimes it's not just question, okay, you have an objection, I reply. You have to build on that. And that's why I put this one in particular as an example because that's what creates this one. You know, th you have to do with this one. Um, now, oh, sorry. But if, if you go on the, on the other one instead, if they, go and set, if they go and buy again, I mean, they can be downsizing, upsizing, they might be moving out of state. So that will give me the, the input I need to be able to answer them. Uh, let's say that example is going out of state. At this point, I will have to refer it to somebody else. Correct? I would say, we don't work. Our, li our license is just for the state of Florida. Plus, I mean, if it's a $3 million, you might go down to Naples or Miami and help them out. But if it's a $200,000, uh, you just refer it out, right? So, um, but uh, <coughs> if, uh, if uh, they, they stay in the state, uh, I mean, that's a pretty simple solution. Why? Why is a simple solution? Because, um, let me go back one second here. Um, so, they want to sell their house when the value goes up. Why are they saying that? They want to make more money on the house, right? But if their house, this is their house is going up 10%. Okay? And they will be buying another house. But it doesn't matter if it's smaller or bigger. Okay? Wow, this one's a really uh, so but will this this one goes up 10% too? The whole market move at once. It's not your house, you'll get more value of that house or the neighbor's house. So that's why it really doesn't make sense the question. Plus, waiting, uh, if, if, if you look at your market, what's happening, waiting, you actually might be losing money. Why? Now, let me try to get another market here. So this one is very difficult to see. Oh, here we go, I got a green one. Oh, the green one. So let's say that this house is worth 100, okay? And you wait six months, the market is going up right now, right? We have low inventory, so the market is still going up. So if in this six months, six months, the market is going up 10%, 10%, okay? You buy a house that is worth 300,000 because you're moving up, right? You, you need to buy a bigger house. Uh, you, you buy a bigger house, so that 10% is, is 30,000, wait, okay, don't even write, it's 30,000 pounds more, right? So is it worth it for him to wait? No, he's losing money. His house, yes, is going up in price. He's buying the next house with, this, with the same exact, uh, uh, increase in price plus because they, they, they in six months the market right now the, the tendency is to go up you will pay an extra now 10% is a little exaggerated in six months but I just want to make the point here okay so it will not be actually 30% just to make you understand there will be a percentage where the market will go up now also interest rates do the interest rates go up yeah. absolutely Right now we are kind of steady, and it's, for now we, we, we are good, but we don't know what's happening in six months from now, if the interest rates goes up a quarter point, half a point. Half a point in 30 year mortgage, it's a lot of money of $300,000. It's a lot of money. So if you make the calculation here, then you know with the calculator you can calculate all that and make it really simple. So you also have the interest rates plus interest rates. Going up. So what, what do you think at this point, the gentleman or the lady or the couple that say that I will sell my house when it goes up, what is going to reply to you? You just showed him. Now if he's buying another house, 
It's better to do it right now than later on. Right? Mm -hmm. So you completely dismantle his, uh, how you say, um, idea of getting more money out of, the, out of the house. He can't. He will be losing in the long run. The more he waits, the more he loses. And it's simple math. So uh, uh, that's a simple way to answer. Well, you have to play the numbers, obviously, and, and know what you're talking about. So before that, the important thing is that you know the market. You know the research, the, do the research, OK? So the one thing that I really like to use to know what's happening in the market, and you receive it every month. If you are registered with Aura, you receive it every month. It's market pulse. It gives you all the information that you need. It's a very, very simple way of knowing what's happening in the market. Uh, when we short on inventory, obviously, from the previous months to this month, or so from two months before to now, there will be less, less houses for sale. There will be more houses selling, so we will have less houses on the market at this time. Automatically, that means the prices will go up. Well, because it's a, it's a seller market, right? When it's like that. When there are a lot of houses in the market, that's a buyer's market. So the buyer has the leverage, he can negotiate a little bit more and things like that. These are all things that to be able to answer to your uh, a buyer seller, you need to know. You need to know what hap what's happening in your market. Okay, it's very, very important. And to be honest, with the market pulse, it's a few minutes to look over it and you will understand. And if anybody has a problem with that, you come to my office, you come with me, and, and we'll go over it together. All right? So uh, knowledge is the key as, ever, uh, as all the time, you know? Uh, you have to know what to answer to that. So when you have a lot here and new agents, so when they, you are a new agent, what you need is leverage sometimes, right? You haven't done any transaction. You have uh, just one or two, and maybe you're looking for a, uh, somebody trying to give you a listing or something like that. So um, the leverage, it gives you credibility. So example, if, uh, uh, let's say, I, I just started being, uh, I and actually I did this with Gil. I don't know if you know, but with Gil, I was one of his first agents. And we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one training. So when I was going for listings, oh yes, but I'm with you. I use my leverage, right? My upline, the, 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 my, my mentor, my team leader, my office. I can use all these type of, uh, of leverage. Why not? You get somebody at, uh, today just asked me about luxury. I work in luxury uh, uh, real estate. Why not leverage? We have somebody in our office. I will not be working together uh, alone, right? I have a team behind me. I have people that specialize in it. It's true. My experience is not that much. But guess what? I did smaller houses because I want to learn with that because obviously I don't, if a mistake happens, it can happen. You know, it, it will not be with, with something so important like your house, right? But we do have people specialize in this or in that, or they do commercial, or they do luxury, or they do in this particular area, and they are, we, we team up and we do it together. And it's that, use the leverage. And then obviously, you know, you do it. You're the one doing the listing, or, 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 this, or the buyers, you know, in that particular uh, niche. But uh, uh, to get it, you can use somebody in your office. I have no problem with somebody using my name, you know, or, or, or I don't think Gil does neither, or Bobby, or any of us has that problem. We're here to help you. So um, that is what I would use. Now, seller objection can be different. Um, is somebody trying to uh, uh, sell the house with you? You know, it's an Aspire listing. I love Aspire, by the way. I do love Aspire. Why? Because you get to play on the list. 
that didn't. The other, the other realtor didn't sell the house, right? He messed up. So what I do, I go over his MLS and check everything that is wrong there. Is that leverage? Yes. Mm -hmm. It gives me leverage to get the listing, obviously, right? Facebook, I don't like that much, to be honest. So I don't go on a, a, a lot of, a, a, a after the Facebooks. Um, it's not my, uh, my forte, let's say. But uh, you know, I did a few Facebooks here and there. I did. And uh, there are a different way of approaching them completely from what is the, what is the, the, the expired listing or somebody that's actually trying to list the house with you. So they're all different uh, uh, techniques. Um, now, example, going back a second, if somebody is trying to sell the house with you and is giving you a chance, uh, I tell you what, my listing presentation lasts from three to four hours. Okay? But two hours and 50 minutes are just building rapport. They will give you the house because they're your friends. And you know what you're talking about and you answer the questions. The actual presentation, it's not that long, to be honest. You just have to tell you, okay, this is uh, this and this and this and that. So you're selling yourself, correct? Sometimes I go there, actually I don't even have a CMA because that's not as important right now. Everybody tells you, you have to go with a CMA. I don't. I don't go with CMA right away. Why? What am I selling right now? I'm selling myself, exactly. I'm selling my experience. I'm selling my knowledge. Right? If they're not willing to listen to me and stuff like that, and I go directly to a CMA, that's why my listing presentation lasts that long. Three, four hours, but it's building rapport. They like to show you the house. They like to talk to you if you give them a chance. They tell you everything you want to know. You don't even have to ask many times. Honest. And obviously it depends on the circumstances, right? Some are for divorce, some are because the, the kids grew up uh, empty nesters, so they have to move out. Yeah, they don't have to, but they move out and they get a small house, or they have more children, they have to move up. So there are all different circumstances. And then if you give them a chance, they will tell you about it. Right? So, but the, the objections will be different from all the, these different situations, okay? Uh, now, during a transaction, you might have also objections. If you are in a transaction, example, you have uh, uh, this will be coming up in a second, the two volunteers, okay? So be ready, I wanna see those hands up. But when you have a transaction, um, I mean, you have objections there too, right? Yeah. You have objections from the other agents? Yeah. From your yeah. seller? Yeah. From the buyer? Well, the buyer you don't, unless you represent both sides. And, uh, and that one, by the way, is your goal. You should be always aiming to do 9% commission. Now we go a little bit off topic for a second, okay? But my goal always has been to do 9% commission. And that's how that happens. You have a listing. The listing gets a buyer. Already 6%, correct? Now, who's selling has to go somewhere, has to buy another house. Very possibly, right? Mm -hmm. That's a 9%. My record is 12%. Mm. Wow. So, uh, yeah, because I sold them one of my other listings to, to, to somebody that was selling. So. Uh, but anyway, uh, that happened one time in all these years that I've been doing real estate. So, but, okay. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, yes, you have also uh, uh, um, objections during transactions. So you have to be ready for those too. What happens if something comes about, uh, you know, it, what can it be? It can it be about an appraisal? Correct? It can be about an inspection. It can be from a buyer. I don't like that green. Whoa. How do you overturn those? That's just pretty simple. But <laughs> 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 well, 
no. It's, uh, but we will go there more in details, right? So right now, what I would like to do is have like two volunteers here, and uh, you know somebody that offers their services, and uh, we play a little bit. We do a little bit of, of role play. In objections, everybody shy. You? Volunteer? Volunteer! Yeah, yeah. Volunteer! Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hold you on. Do you okay. okay, come here. One more. Ready. We'll try, we'll try. Well, let's start with him, then, then we get another one. So let's say that right now we have a buyer. You know. Come on. Come yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, yeah, yeah. Where's the other one? Yeah, oh, one. Thank you. Eh? So right now, we're going over some objections. Okay. Uh, now, we don't feel like this is a, is a uh, good time to buy. Uh, it depends because you know we cannot uh, project the possible uh, rates uh, as of this moment. It might increase you know, uh, next month. So we should uh, avail or take advantage for this moment's low interest. Mm. Hello, one second. I don't know. You Know your market. No. Okay, no. exactly. So, are they? Uh, uh, if you know your market, you know how to answer. Correct. Uh, oh, sorry, stay here. Stay here. Well, I'm going to use you more. Okay. okay. Uh, so, if you know your market, you will have the answer. Are the housing prices going up? Are the interest rates going up? We go back to the first example we did, right? So. And this is on the buyer side, it's actually not on the listing side. But it works the same way. Having knowledge, you're able to answer to the buyer. If you buy six months from now, it will cost you more. What is it holding you up right now? And uh, so uh, sometimes, and then, Maybe you have to go and do a little bit of discovery. There might be something else behind that. That is not only the timing. It's not that they feel that they can't buy right now, that the, the timing is wrong for buying a house. Mm -hmm. It's that they have some issues. And that you dig more. It's a credit issue. It's a down payment issue. What kind of issue is there? Right? Or, or, or a school system, or, or, or something, the, the kids are not out of school, or whatever, whatever it is. But you can overturn those objections, knowing what's going on. So you always have to do a follow-up, you do, always have to do some discovery, and you do it in a gentle way, okay? So uh, uh, somebody's working with another agent, so the, the buyer is working to Yeah, the buyer is working with another agent. Yeah, no problem with that. We can collaborate. We are just like family here. Uh, maybe we can help you, but I can share uh, more maybe inputs uh, to that so that we can uh, help you much more. If we are, we can discuss together with your uh, buying uh, agent. Uh -huh. thing, yeah? uh, he has a buying agent. Yeah, I'm a seller's agent. Uh, but no, no, no. Yeah, you are, no, this, no, you no, mean no. you're talking to a buyer. And this buyer already tells you, oh, I have already an agent. Yeah, what do you yeah. Say? Oh, okay? Yeah, that would be fine uh, that you have that uh, agent, but uh, you may try to consider my, you know, uh, my profile number data as well, because just recently, I uh, just uh, sold something that's uh, at least 5,000 or 7,000 higher than the uh, price uh, made mentioned by the, uh, by the uh, seller. So maybe we can uh, discuss if you can uh, give me a, 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 a little of your time. We can dis uh, discuss further on how I can uh, help you much more to have this. Well, you know. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, and you are correct. Uh, the thing is that uh, what I will say to them is, uh, man, sir, uh, I mean, you do in the research. I know you went on my website, and you're looking at the homes. And, 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 and you call in me, or, or, or we're talking about the, 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 the houses right now, and you're telling me that you have another agent. Uh, now, if uh, your agent was doing his job, obviously, you would have the same house as I would have, because they all come from the same place, from the MLS, mm -hmm. right? Now, I have a proven record of selling homes 
in uh, so many homes and this and that. You can do numbers and, and tell them. Or I know, you know, uh, how to really take care of you. You can even say I'm a new agent. You know what? You will be my first client. Mm -hmm. I will dedicate all my time to you to do this. To do this. My team and I. Right? Mm -hmm. You know how many people like to give first time opportunities to, to other people? There's nice people out there. There's some. All right? So take advantage of it. I mean, there are different ways to answer. I, you know, I will not, we can go to infinity here, how many times, how many ways you can answer this question. And each one of us, by the way, remember this. Each one of us have, will have a different style. And why? Starting from the point that we all have different personalities. I'm a D personality. So I'm a direct approach. Right? I'm right to the point. Bless you. A, 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 a C personality will go more point by point. So we will have a different way of approaching even the objections. The important thing is that you know the basics of how to handle it. Be ready mentally with knowledge. That's a key point. If you have those, it doesn't matter really what personality you are. You and I, you know, we will we'll do it a different way. Jose and I, we have a different way of answering things. And not because I'm Italian and he's from the Philippines. You know, we have two foreigners, but uh, it's, it's how we approach it because we are different. And we have different knowledge and we have different character and everything, so uh, it cannot be the same. So, any questions about this? Mm -hmm. eh? When you're working with another agent, how you can answer it? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes? I have a question. Sometimes I feel bad. You feel because bad. I feel bad because I'm like, oh, if somebody has already initially like working with them, I feel like I'm stealing them away. I, like, I, sometimes I ask, have you bought, have you signed anything? You know, is it like 100%? But honestly, I mean, I feel a little bad. Because if it was me, I wouldn't want somebody to do that. But at the same time, I feel like I need to be, like, cheaper, you know, like, I need to be on it. Chipa, and yeah. then that wouldn't happen. No, no, no entiendo, no entiendo. <laughs> so uh, so the, the, the thing is this. Listen, if one of my, I, I lose bias sometimes, and I'll be honest. I, I, sometimes I not, can't keep up with all of them. And I know I'll lose some of them to another agent. And, and it's part of the business. But why? It's not, the, it's not the fault of the agent that took the, my buyer. It's my fault. Yeah. I didn't follow up. And this is what's happening. When you talk to somebody that tells you you are an agent, and she's looking somewhere you know, on your website, and, and going, that, it's not your fault. It's his fault. You know, the, yeah, the other agent's fault, in my opinion. So I mean, you just try to give a, ser a better service, right? better customer service. So, but at that point, you have to make sure that you're really on top of it, right? That, that you really follow this person and because you're selling a, a better service. You have to really make sure that you are selling a better service. Correct? So, you don't feel bad. Está bien, está bien. It's so great because you're helping them get done exactly. what they're not getting from the other agent. You're helping somebody. And uh, guys, remember, we're providing a service. We are helping people. That's the beauty of this job. We are actually helping people. Obviously, they can buy by and sell by themselves. But we have the knowledge. We have to take the test. We know the laws. You're supposed to know the laws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we know how it works. We know how to negotiate. We learn all these things. We know how to overturn objections. Uh, from the other party. And this is what helps. We know the paperwork. We know how to do a contract. So it's true. The buyers and the sellers could sell by themselves. But we are providing a service. We are helping them. We get paid for doing it, obviously. But everybody that provides a service gets paid. It's normal. So you actually should be feeling good because you are helping people. Right? And, and the reason we're doing these classes is to make you better, to 
give a better service, to be able to negotiate better, to be able to uh, overturn uh, uh, objections so they are advantage or you buy or you sell it. First, you have to get the buy and sell it, but it's fine, you know? And, and so we have objections for that, as we saw. As we saw. So, now, we don't want to pay commission. Yeah, uh, so thank you, Franzi. Uh, I'm here, first and foremost, I want to educate you how I can, or, or my company can help you. Because it's not more on the commission, because all those commission will just come once you have, you know, your property sold. And besides that, uh, I can assure you that uh, you'll be experiencing uh, the, the, you know, uh, I can assure you that uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be experiencing uh, a good uh, transaction with me. Remember, you're talking to a buyer, not to a seller. Uh, to, to, to a buyer. Yeah, with that, you don't have to worry with that because I'm willing to ring services and, and those uh, amount that you made mention is, will just come after you have your money. And I, I, I also, I try my very best to make uh, an approach with this that you will not be, uh, uh, you, you will be much bothered with the commission thing because once you can avail my services, you can- My service is free to you. I mean, if you are a buyer, you are my buyer, my service is free to you. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's why a I really- sell it always in the state of Florida, the seller pays the Morning, commission. everyone. Hi. 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 How are you doing? If you want, if black is coming, if you want, if black is coming. So this is the point. We have to pay attention what we're doing because honestly, you know, if you are a buyer, and because in other countries, in other states, they used to pay the commission. I'm from Italy. In Italy, the buyer does pay commission. So if somebody's coming from Italy, obviously they will say, oh, uh, how, how much is my commission? I don't want to pay commission. Guess what? State of Florida, we don't. Pay, the buyer does not pay commission. Yeah, exactly. It's the buyer. I, I, is it going to be your best friend? Yes, absolutely. It's going to be your best friend. Do you charge property? Huh? <laughs> charge property? Yes, of course. Yes. I never paid one in all these so years, okay. except for short sales. <laughs> when they get the bill for the, the burger fee. Oh yeah, you said you said pay you then. No, but that's uh, that's another objection that you can overturn yeah. very easily, right? Error and omission, That's insurance, and all the things that are included mm -hmm. in that in that in that fee, it's very easy to overturn that kind of objection. Correct? He's just saying that you got to let him know up front. Yeah. So, but, you're at, but you're it's true. Well, they're not, they're not going to pay you anything, but no. they do actually have to pay you. Right, right. but something. guys, the thing is, it's a, I work with a lot of internationals, and this is actually an objection I get from internationals because they are used to pay the buyer is used to paying uh, 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 realtor fees. You know, commissions. Here, you don't have it. It's beautiful. Only the seller. So yes, you're saving money now buying, but when you sell, then yes, you will have to pay the commission, you know, mm -hmm. at the time that you sell. So, and that will be many years from now. I don't know when, but uh, normally the, the average, the person stays in the house is about seven years. Average, all right? So I got this. It's new buyer. I, I thought it's the same. Right, right. right now we do a kind of buyer objections, yeah. and uh, um, now we want to think it over. You know, uh, 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 the buyer say, "Ah, oh, we want to think about it." You know, I'm not sure that I want to buy right now. So practically, it would be kind of like the first one that right? it's not the right time for them to buy. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So why? Why do you want to think it over? That time is of an essence. As we said before, why? Because the market right now, the prices are going up. The interest rates are will go up. So it's time now to buy. Who is it to think about it? Tell me, what's your problem? We can fix any problem you have. Is it about down payment? We have programs for that. Who is it? Let me know. And they will tell you. To be honest, people like to talk to, and tell you things, as I said before. And, and so it's a very easy one to, to, to overturn, okay? Now, the price is too high. Who's there? Stay here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, first and foremost, I'm here to, you know, uh, ensure that uh, we are in a right track with the pricing because uh, we cannot overprice or we cannot underprice because first and foremost we have the appraisal thing. So we consider that also with our pricing, we can, 
prices here is regulated, so we cannot say it's too high or too low. So I can assure you with that, I'm here to educate and help you how to do uh, go about it to ensure that we are within that uh, amount. You know, I'm here to to help you as as uh, you know. I, I, I almost always I try my very best that my client is just like family to me. So I just want to do something which is not uh, beneficial to my buyer. So please assure sir that I am here to educate you, to help you, right. to provide all this information. So the, the thing is, uh, really, uh, at that point, you know, you should know the neighborhood. You should have done a little bit of research before going. I normally do that. So if I'm showing a house in a particular house area, let's say I'm working in Conway, I know what's the average of the prices for certain particular home, the particular home that they look at. A general knowledge. You don't have to be specific house by house. You can go more in detail later. But if you already know that genetically that is in line with what we're looking for, what's the other thing that protects the buyer? Exactly. They will have an appraisal. If they have a mortgage, they have an appraisal. Guess what? If we get to the appraisal that the price is different, we will have to renegotiate, <coughs> right? We don't have to accept it. The buyer and the sellers always have three choices, to accept, counter, or decline, always. And actually, when I send an offer, I always put in my email. I always put on the bottom of my email, please let me know if the, buy, if the, the, the offer has been accepted, is it going to counter, or is it the client? They have to know that they have three choices. How, right? do, you get, how do you get around people who are uh, doing the, the economy is going to collapse, they're going to wait until prices come down? Like. <laughs> well, uh, 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 I actually had a few of those, and at the end of the bar anyway, I said, listen, at this point, if if the end is going, to, uh, if the world is going to end, what do you care about the money? <laughs> <laughs> right? They're all expecting some collapse of the housing market again, so they're like, "Oh, we're going to wait." No, but uh, right now, it, and and you can counter that too, because right now, what we have in place with the mortgage companies, it can never happen. What happened in two thousand and eight? It can never happen again because there are some safeguards that they put in place where it cannot happen. They don't give out a mortgage. I mean, anybody that here that did a few transactions, you know that it's not that easy to get a mortgage anymore. Not like it used to be. I mean, you didn't even have to show income at that time and, and they will sign your paper, you know. The I always joke, I'm like, so when you're unemployed, you have no cash, where you go look for a house to buy? <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you are if you are unemployed, that uh, yeah, that's obviously a challenge. Well, that's, that's what they're saying is when the economy collapses, which everyone will lose their job again. No one will have any money. Cash will be king. So unless you're holding on to cash, you're not going to be buying any house during that time. Uh, I, I never saw anybody. I never met anybody that extreme, to be honest, yeah. up to now. But excuse me, sir. What I have two clients uh, just recently uh, that kind of thinking as well. So what I did is to contact the lender company, uh, try to research for the marketing uh, market trend, give them all the information, and also my uh, mortgage or my lender told them that based on their data, everything is going up. Well, that, that's true. Until now, they're going to sign it because the last last two months, the price now is higher. So but they decided. And, and that's the thing. You can go back to what is the... Uh, uh, the market polls that you get from Aura. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I give it, sometimes I give it to a client. I yeah. show them. This is what the market is doing right now. Actually, it's going up because there is low inventory. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and, and so the, the seller is still in control. And the provision, and actually, you, you, if <coughs> you read the articles that comes also from Realtor, uh, um, from Florida Realtor, uh, you see that you should be receiving the articles there. If you read them, it tells exactly what's, what they're predicting for the market to go and how, how it will be. I know that it will be good until the end of 2021. You can't stop people watching Fox News, though. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> I tell you what, you will never get 100% of them. So, you know. Uh, now, the most common seller objections. Did you cut your commission? 
Now, what I told you before, when I do a listening presentation, I do a three, four hour listening presentation, right? And two, two hours and 50 minutes are actually building rapport with them and talking to them without even talking about the house. And I don't go with a CMA. I'm selling my own services first. I'm selling myself first, right? And then I will do the, all, everything that is needed to be done once they are convinced they want to work with me, correct? So, and, it, and I found out that that actually works even better in a luxury market. All the luxury listings that I got, I got them that way. Without pressuring them with numbers or anything like that. It letting you know what I can do, where I'm from, and what I did. Okay? And, uh, and uh, so, that's why my commission is worth this much. I'm working a transaction right now when I have an 8% commission. I was able to get 8%. So, it's not true that you have to go for 5%. Actually, lowering, in, this is my personal opinion, guys, okay? So, don't, don't take care of that. But my, my uh, uh, issue is, if we continue to lower our commissions, we're ruining our own jobs. We're ruining our own salaries. Where is the limit? I saw some, some listings right now at 2%. I refuse to do it. I refuse. You know, and I understand that there are agents that really need a listing right now, they hope, and they overprice it and put down the commission. So they will never sell it. And if they do, you know, they, 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 they ruin the market for us, the realtors. Where is the limit? We'll go to down to 1%. So I'm, I'm fighting against that, to be honest. And tell you what, I have listings. I do have listings without cutting my commission. So it's possible to be done. But you have to show them that you can do it. Who are you? What can you do? It's important. And that's why I told you before in the, in the previous slides, for especially the new agents, use leverage. Use your team, use your team leader, use your mentors, use your uh, 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 upline. Use them. They have no problem with that. Use me if you want. You are new in the market, you have a luxury listing, call me. Say, hey, Biagio. Can you help me with this? Yes, no problem. I will. Okay, and I will not get your commission. Guess what? All right, I want you to succeed. I want you to grow. And everybody here wants you to grow. So we are here to help each other to grow. We're a team. And that's why you should use this leverage, especially if you're new. Because obviously you have to build your business still, right? And uh, no problem, anything that comes, it can be done. So, I will not, if I give you an A plus service, why should I cut my commission? There are agents that are worth 3%, there are agents that are worth 2%, and there are agents that are worth 1%. What are you? I'm worth 3%, at least. I am. <coughs> and why? Because how I do things, how I market it, and, and a lot of different things. But my service is a 3% service. I'm an A-plus agent. And you all should be A-plus agents, mm -hmm. right? So if you're not able to negotiate for your own, and this you can tell actually to the seller, if, you're not, if I'm not able to negotiate for my own commission, how do you expect me to negotiate with the buyer? I have like low negotiation skills. And that comes from the first slice that we saw. It's your mindset. How do you go to that listing presentation? Put some music that pumps you up, you know? It makes you, ah, I want to do this. Right? Be excited about it. Obviously have the tools, have the knowledge. So you do your research, know the market and all these things, and you can get the full commission. So, 
You have too many listings. We need more attention. It happened to me, actually. It did happen to me. They said, yeah, Joey, you have too many listings. You can't keep up with all of them. I said, well, yes, I am. I'm organized. Guess what? I have a team. So I'm not by myself. Right now we have, how many we have in, in, in the alliance? Uh, 200 something, I think. But, I mean, we have 200 agents. I'm not alone. I know by myself. Obviously, I check that everything is done. This is like running a business, right? So, uh, uh, actually it is running a business, <laughs> not like, it is running a business. So you have to know what you're doing. And if you have multiple listings, you have to really follow all of them because they like to follow up to all the data. But you can organize those things. You can have other agents help you out, uh, new agents that want to learn, you know, and, and, and give them a, a, a little percentage of, or, or, or a fee, and they will be happy to do it. So anything is possible. We have a team, we work together. Right? If I have a, a showing that I have to do in one of my listings, and I can't, I have to a showing somewhere else. Can I ask one of you to go? If I give you 500 bucks, will you go? I See, look how many hands up. <laughs> so, we have a team. <coughs> Bless you. Now, I want to find a house before I put mine on the market. This is very, very common. People is downsizing or upsizing. Is a very common uh, uh, thing. But the way I overturn this normally is a very simple way. If, if I have a listing, somebody gives me an offer with a contingency, and it's called a contingency, of a sale of another house, I immediately look if that house is on the market and at what price is on the market. Right? So here the question is. I want to find a house before I put mine on the market. Now, with the market the way it is now that we have low inventory, you will lose the, the house because you're not ready. Your house should be already on the market and it should be at a competitive price. And then we can do a, 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 a multiple closing at the same time and it will be very easy transaction. Like this, it's very difficult because you don't have a chance of uh, 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 putting the house on the market and, and, and show it to the other agent before you put the offer in. To be honest, me as a listing agent, I will look at that. So the house needs to be on the market. That's why, I mean, you'll be spending a lot of time running around, eventually finding the house, and you cannot put an <coughs> offer in. Because the quotation is obviously on the sale of their house. How much? How long is the seller going to wait for that house to sell? Depends on the situation. But it depends if the house is on the market and depends on, on what price. So me, listing agent, I will never accept an offer without seeing that. I will double check. And you have to tell your buyer, or actually your seller, that if they're looking for another house, that's the way it works. Typically, it needs to be under, I mean, for me, it, I like to see it uh, as a pending uh, sale. I like to know when they're, when they're closing. Yeah, they're closing yeah you have to do your sales. research. You, you, can, you, you like to have it as a pending, but it's not always a, as a pending. Most, I most sellers I've had one of one you pass inspection. Yeah. Or they will drive home. Right. But it's, so you really want to have that house on the market. That brings me back to the same point, right? Correct? Yep. So, uh, uh, and, and price is key, obviously. Because the seller says, oh, I will make an extra 30,000. I'll put 30,000 off over the market value. And I see that, and they put a contingency on selling that house. I say, no, it's not, it's not real, it's not reasonable. Even so, that it, will, it wouldn't be penny. If it's, I see that it's 10,000 below the market value, okay, I said, eh, 
I thought to the seller, there is a chat. <coughs> Excuse me. Depending on how is it going on, my, on the house also. Has it been, how long has it been on the market? Correct? Mm -hmm. So, um, now you don't handle homes in, your price, in this price range. And well, I think we touched this before. Uh, about the, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's true, you know, for somebody that is new in the market, as I mentioned before, but you can say you can use, uh, I did smaller transactions, so, you know, I, I learned a lot, and selling a, a big home or a smaller home is about the same thing. But I also have in my, uh, uh, my mentor, my, my team leader, and so on, use your leverage, again, like we said before, and say, you know what, well, we have people specializing that, and I will be working hand in hand with them. I'm not alone, right? So <coughs> the, 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 the thing is that you say that you have some experience. Now, you don't have experience in the luxury market, but that doesn't say that you cannot sell that, that, that property. Now, uh, there's things that you need to know in the luxury market because the, the, the marketing is a little bit different, a little bit more expensive too. So you will have to do an investment when you work in a, in a luxury market, right? So, uh, I mean, uh, there are all things that you need to know, but, and that's why you will need the help, the help of somebody that is already in that market to start with, okay? But let them know that you have some experience. Let them know that your team has experience. If you don't have it yourself, you know, uh, you, you've been since January 7th, you've been an agent. So obviously you haven't sold the house yet, right? So you have to use your leverage. It's, it's, it's mandatory that you use your leverage right now, correct? Okay. If you did a few transactions, you have already a few transactions that you can brag about under your belt. And it will come, they will come, <laughs> all right? So, and the last one is, if I have to sell at that price, I will sell it myself. Guess what? A lot of sellers think they can do better than you. Right? But then guess what? How many of them that will do for sale by owner, then at the end, use a realtor? About 90%. Ah, it's higher than that, actually. I think it's 96%. 96%. Of the people that sell by owner, at the end use a realtor. Actually, the owner of uh, uh, <laughs> you know about this, yeah. so he used a yeah, uh, uh, the the for sale by by owner, the owner of the sell for for sell by owner. He actually used a realtor to sell his house. He couldn't sell it by himself. So that's proof, and you can tell this to the. Actually, they, it's, it's a curious thing, so they, they like it to hear about it, you know, your, your, your seller. And obviously, you have your knowledge. You know, we said before, you know the market. You know how to, to, to do the transaction. You know the paperwork. You know how to negotiate. You know what's happening and, and, and what that is, is, is selling around and what is not selling around. You know, the houses that have been a long time in the market for a certain price and a certain condition. You have others that are sold right away. So that's what you give into them for that commission. It's your experience, your knowledge. Be ready, be prepared. It's not, they think in terms of money. And then there is other things too. When you sell by owner, who checks the people that come in your house? You gonna be there or your wife is gonna be there? She's gonna be alone? Do you know who's coming in your house? You give your phone number to everybody. You put that sign, that number out there. It's available to everybody call you. And say, I wanna see your house, I wanna get inside your house. Right? Do you know how to negotiate? Are you negotiating for what? Yeah, you might be in a business, it's another type of business where you have to negotiate. But why are you nego really negotiating? Just the numbers? On a contract, everything is negotiable. Everything is negotiable. So, even the fees for the title company, I can save you a lot of money 
And no, it's not just my fee. I'm going to say, yeah, you pay my fee because I'm working for you, but I'm saving you money in other places. And I will show you how. I'm great at what I do. I'll be a little cocky. You know what? My, you know what my motto is? I come from soccer. I'm a soccer coach. We are invincible. That's my motto. If you've been on a soccer field, you would have heard it. You can hear it three, three, three soccer fields away. And this always been, and with my team, we do this. Actually, we do it here in the council too. I saw her say, we are invincible. But, <laughs> but that's the mentality. How many of you heard of Tony Robbins or going to Tony Robbins? Isn't that the mentality he's teaching? Yeah. Be the one, the only, the best, be invincible? That's the mentality, right? So I got that from soccer when I was a kid. I got a little lucky. But that's the approach that you have to have. And it's not to be cocky, it's be sure of yourself. Be sure of the information you have. <coughs> right? The information that you're giving out to the seller or to the buyer is very, very important. You have to be sure of what you're saying. So you can't say, oh, I think that, you know, might be this. No, this is, you know. Uh, I don't know if I like this house. So how do you rate this house? The, uh, we're talking with a buyer, right? We're showing a house. So I say, ah, oh, but this house is as this, as that, okay. Now, I've been working in this business for many, many years. I never found a house that for a buyer is a, a 10 out of 10. Never found one that is a 10 out of 10, that is always something. So, one to 10, how do you rate this house? What would it take it to bring it to a 10? So, we always buy an eight, a seven or eight at the end, right? We never buy an a 10. There's always something. I don't like that green. Okay. That's cosmetic. It can be changed. Actually, you know what? It's not that it can be changed, it should be changed. When you get into the house, the, the, the thing that you want to do is change the toilets and paint the house. And make it yours. Especially if you're talking to a lady, she loves it. Right, so this is how you always turn objections. It's very easy, once you know how. It needs a little practice. And that's why we do role playing. Role playing is very important. You can do it between you, you guys. Even yourself, you, you pair up. And you, and you do role play. It's very, very important. It gives you the confidence. True. Beginning, you feel a little bit uncomfortable. I used to do a one-on-one -on -one with Gil. It was a pain, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> he made me cry. But, <laughs> but the thing is uh, that I learned from it. Once I was able to answer to Gil, guess what? I have no problem in answering to a buyer or to a seller or to another agent. <laughs> I am invincible. <laughs> so... It's, and, and we go back to the first step, to the first slide, is a state of mind and knowledge. These two combined together are very, very, very powerful. So, any questions on that? No? Now, we have objections in transactions, as we said before. They can be on a on the uh, inspection report. So uh, this happens almost every time. So there is, uh, I'm a listing agent, I receive it from the buyer, or I'm on the buyer, the buyer say, ah, this and this and that. Listen, pick what is important to you. Actually, I will help, I will go over it, I'll give you some suggestions. The things that I think that are structural, that are a lot of money, and we work with that. And then we have different ways of going with that. We can ask for a credit, we can ask the seller to, to, to repair. That's it. It's very easy. Okay? And then you negotiate the amount of the repair. So uh, a lot of times I go up to $10,000 in credits for, for, uh, for different things in the house. Now, the, 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 the seller, you are with the buyer, the seller say, the, you know what, well, the seller will not accept this price. Say, well, you have, your house has been in the market already for four months, you know, 
And what about if it's going to be on the market for another four months? How much is going to cost in between the mortgage, insurance, the taxes, uh, and everything else, the, the, the utilities, uh, if something breaks, and something, uh, and no, 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 no. How much is going to cost him within the four months? Make a calculation. It's exactly this number. So, isn't it better to agree now and close this deal? Right? They always think they can do better. But you have to make them think. It's, you know, uh, uh, the, the success rate is not 100% of this. But, you know, I, 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 do get, I do get quite a few that actually, ah, man, that makes sense. You know, and we get, even though it's a seller's market, you can get a rebate for, for your buyer. He feels really good, even if it's $5,000. He's buying $5,000 less in a seller's market. Let him know that it's a seller's market, by the way. Right? And he feels really good. He saved $5,000. And so, uh, this is talking to, to, to another agent that obviously had to refer it to the, to the seller, right? But if you're able to, 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 to make it work, I mean, it works, right? Uh, obviously, you have to know what happened to that house. How long has it been in the market? What's happening to it? If it's something that you think it will sell right away, it's a little bit more difficult. But right? if you need to ask for closing costs or things like this, you can't ask a lower price and closing costs. Yes, it's, uh, now, appraisal dispute. This is something that really, really can really break a deal. Many times do. Okay? Uh, the inspection, no. We're always able to, to get around that one way or the other. We negotiate and stuff like that. Sometimes you find a seller that he's stuck in getting that price. And it's really, really a challenge. But I had a few times where the appraisal was wrong. Actually, what the appraisal that went out there, he did it wrong. Wrong square footage, or wrong, I don't know, whatever. And I had to contest it. It happened two, three times in all the years I've been working. But two times I was able to, to get a better deal, a better number from, from the appraisal itself. So don't just take it for granted. Look over it. Try to understand it, okay? Uh, it's not very often that happens, but you can make them change sometimes. Sometimes the appraiser will say no, but you know. Uh, and then there is the fact that the seller say, oh, okay, no, I want still this amount, but this is the appraisal. Can we negotiate something in between? We can, but why the buyer should be buying something that is more of market value? Depends on how much is value to them. <coughs> exactly my point, yes. Sometimes it has more value for them to be in that area, be in that school district, be in that particular house because the wife loves it, they wouldn't pay $5,000 more. Correct. So <coughs> everything has a value. Even the emotion, there is an emotional value in between buyers and sellers too. You have to consider that one too. There is an emotional value. And, and, and some things do have value, you know, that are not uh, 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 just real estate. I like the items that we mentioned before. So it is possible also to negotiate that, that it's actually a little bit more of what the market value is. Plus, can you show them how the market is going and how much time it, need, it, it will be to, for them to recuperate that money? The market's going up, right? So it will be just for a short period of time where they out that $5,000. Because on a house that, that is uh, 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 half a million dollars, and uh, uh, the house in, in the next year, in the next six months, will go up 1%, let's say. You already make that money up in six months. It's not a big deal on a half a million dollars. So really just uh, work it. It's always possible to have a negotiation and have a good exit from that negotiation, okay? Nothing is written in stone. <coughs> and, and that's the main thing is to, to try to understand your buyer. And I know that you don't have contact with the seller or vice versa, right? Because you have to go to another agent. 
So it's really important that there is a collaboration between the agents. No arguing, no being stubborn, but work together. You both after the same goal, right? And sometimes you do find agents that are a little bit more, that are a little bit more stubborn, okay? So make them understand. Guys, we have to get to a conclusion here. If we fight, we don't get anywhere, right? So let's make it work. Let's put our minds together and make it work. That's the key, is, the key is doing that before you get to some of these issues. All right. So, but that's why this is a business where you build rapport. Correct? I told you, my listed presentation is three, four hours, but my actual presentation is 10 minutes. So two hours and 50 minutes is from building rapport. With the agent too, you should talk to him that it's not only about the transaction sometimes, and build that relationship, especially if it's an important, and you expect to have something going on and doing, so you're able to talk about it in a better way, and solve the problems, instead of fighting about the problems. Got it? Any questions about that? No? No questions? Nada? Here you go. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'm using the words of how and how we can do it together uh, during the transaction. What I'm using most words is how we can do it together. It's just like implying something that collab collaboration. Teamwork. Yeah. Then also like what? What are the distinct that we should be doing with it so that we can you know let this happen like that? So mm -hmm. that's the two words I keep on using instead of why is it why not why instead of you know. But it's, it's logic, we will both, uh, at the end, what is it that we want to get? To get to a closing. Okay. We both want the same thing, right? So we have to work together. Closing means? Money. Ching ching. <laughs> so this is, these are my recommendations. Listen carefully. The, the sellers, the buyers, will give you a lot of information without you asking. Just listen. They will tell you I have kids. How many kids? They're in elementary schools. What they're looking for. So the, that will be, schools will be important for them. Uh, in that case, you might need a backyard with a fence. You already know that if they have kids, if they have children, right? Uh, I mean, you have to listen what they're telling you. Write it down. Actually, I believe that I saw that we have a buyer questionnaire. So use it, actually, because there is some good questions in there, especially for the new agents. All right, use the buyer questionnaire, and uh, oh. I will find out where it is. Do you know oh, where it is? No, I was just going to say, if you're wondering where that is, it's in uh, EXP Enterprise. EXP Enterprise, very good. Yes. Yeah. If you go to the marketing center, there's thousands of downloads for you to be able to personalize your own door hangers, postcards, all that kind of stuff. But in there, there's also something called the buyer questionnaire. And it already has your photo on there. You just need to update the, the, and edit the, um, the contact info. So you don't put your name, your phone number, your website, all that kind of stuff. But all the, the, the uh, questions are already typed out and it is a really, really good guide for you, especially if you're a newer agent. Yeah, so uh, i tell you what. So listen because they give you the information. <coughs> And sometimes you don't even have to ask those questions, but it's good to know those questions, just in case. Uh, it's how you want, if they tell you that they have children, it's good to ask. What's their age? No, what's their age? Yeah. More than names. Yeah, you also the names, because the next time that you talk to them, so how are Johnny and, uh, and Filippo? You know, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, and, and they like that, like they, that. One thing I do, when I talk to a buyer or a seller, guys, I always put it in my phone. Why? Next time they call, I don't have just a phone number. I have Filippo calling. Hello, Filippo, how are you? Long time no talk. They love it when you use the first name. So I always, every time I talk to a buyer or a seller, I put it in my phone. It's, it's a routine for me, immediately. <coughs> I have about 3,000. Yeah, and I have clients like, who is this? And I'm like, oh, 
Ooh, sorry, I called you from a different number. <laughs> so, but the thing is that they, if they call in you, they like to be called by first. They like to be recognized, right? That's part of being uh, building rapport. And then in the meantime, you pull it up, pull up their name. Oh yeah, in the notes. Oh, okay, he has Johnny and Filippo's sons. They are this age, you know, things like that. So how are Johnny and Filippo? Are they doing good in school? Love it, love it, right? Or they have in the conversation comes that the husband has a sport car. You're talking to the husband. Oh man, are you still driving that car, man? I envy you, you know? Uh, obviously, when you're working with a female or you're working with a male, maybe you have two different approaches. One will be the kids, the other one will be the car, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, that's part of knowledge too, right? It's, you have to learn that part. Um, so, but listen, listen carefully, they give you a lot of information. Whoa, I didn't expect that. <laughs> no. Okay, show empathy, empathy, I, I can't say it. Guys, I'm Italian. <laughs> you can read it, right? <laughs> Empathy. So, uh, yeah, uh, understand what they're saying and, 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 and be, you know, nice with them. Understand, right? Take an educational approach. What that means? Knowledge. We so we spoke about this several times, right? So know what you talking about. Don't make it up. Well, sometimes you can make it up, a little bit. Just a little bit, all right? But <laughs> uh, you should have at least the basic knowledge. Market, and all this, what's happening in their, in their area. Uh, so let them know that you know what you're doing, okay? Now you can negotiate this, you can negotiate that. Um, you see? So, uh, and that means knowing your market. Knowing what your market. Everybody wrote down about the market polls, right? Everybody's receiving it. Everybody knows where to find it. You should be receiving an email once a month. That is very, very, very important. I always look at that. And actually, I hang it in my office so I can look at it several times. That gives you what's happening in the market. A difference of one year and then every other month, how it's been changing. What are the interest rates average? What is the, uh, how many houses there are on the market right now? How many are selling? How many are under contract? All that information is there. How it changed from the previous months. You need to know that. And that's knowledge, okay? Did they email it to you? They email it to you. Aura. Yeah. Uh, if you just started January 7, maybe you didn't receive it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I can show you one later on. Okay. Yeah. I can preach you one, actually, if you want. Just remind me. Okay? Uh, be ready mentally. We spoke about this. You can't go there and think about something else and, uh, yeah, uh, okay, I have another list. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, fine. Thank you, bye. You have to be ready for it. You go in a war. You have to be invincible. You have to win. So you have to go with the right mentality when you're doing this. When you do your phone calls, it's not just, oh, Jesus, I have to do my phone calls there. No, I'm going there. I'm going. Of the 10 I'm calling, I'm going to take nine home. It might not happen. You know, you might take two. But guess what? Two, uh, well, $10,000 average commission <laughs> is 20 grand. Not bad, right? I can use twenty thousand dollars. If you don't want it, give it to me. I, I call them. <laughs> but no, really, the, the the mentality is important. Go there as a winner. When you start doing this, you are the one in charge. You are the one that knows real estate. Not them. You are there to teach them, to work with them, to help them. Okay, but you are the expert. You had to take a long class and a tough exam to be able to do this. And there is a reason why. <coughs> right? So, attitude. Oh. I like that. Now, what do you think about my attitude here? Am I in control? Right? Okay. So, 
convinces attitude. And that's what you have to show to a buyer, to a seller, too. But not a negative attitude, you know, like, yeah, man, you know, yeah. Not that kind of attitude. This attitude, chest out, you know, I know who I am, I know what I'm doing, and, you know, I can help. That kind of attitude. Positive attitude. Right? So, uh, share customer testimonials. Now, for the, for the ones that just started real estate, that is a little bit more of a challenge. Obviously, you don't have customer um, testimonial yes, yet. But, I mean, can you sh leverage your team? Yeah, the team leaders? Listen, this is what Biagio got. This is the testimonial Biagio has. And he's my team leader. He's the one that is mentoring me. We work in hand in hand. Can you do that? And you don't have to have your yours yet. You can use somebody else's. As I said, all the managers here, they have no problem. Dan Royer, he's doing very good. You can use him, you can use me, you can use Gil, you can use Bobby. You know, all of us. It's, we have no problem with that. Leverage. One other thing, most people don't think testimonials don't have to be from selling or buying a home. No, it can be from other agents too. I've worked in sales for 25 years. I have friends and family that went on and did testimonials and just my experience and how I helped them and other jobs not even doing with real estate. I've been in sales my life too, so yeah. Yes. Uh, on LinkedIn, try to get one on LinkedIn from your peers. One That's very important too. Yes. One thing I suggest to uh, new agents all the time is um, sit down and do your buyer consultation with your family or your friends, right? And then and then refine that process and ask them how you can improve it and how it went. And if they like it, if there's anything that they like about it, hopefully, hopefully they like at least something, right? But if there's anything that you liked about that, then have them write a testimonial about it. I love the thorough, um, you know, the, the thorough approach to, you know, approaching me as a buyer. Uh, when I buy my next home, I'm definitely leaving. You mm -hmm. know, something like that. If, if, if you can uh, yeah. start get, yeah. Yeah, you it makes sense. I never did it myself, yeah. but it makes sense. You know, it's uh, it's fine. You can get you it from. What you got. Yeah, you use what you got. Actually, leverage. Yes, but that's why I told you before. Uh, I mean, there are many scripts out there. If you want, we can give you some, and you can practice. But you guys have to do role play. That's how you get better. It's trying with each other. See what mistakes you do. At the beginning, you feel very uncomfortable. I know that. Been there. Mm -hmm. Done that. Okay? But after the results will be incredible. The confidence that you will have later after that. Okay? So do the role play. Don't start trying to go over major objection with the with the buyer or seller without having tried before. You know? And and so you have you're a little bit more uh, how you can you say it? Uh, it will be easier for you. Right? So I suggest that then, you know, if you want we can stay here another half an hour, we pair up and we do some, some role play. You'd be okay with that? I don't see too many hands up. Who's in it? <laughs> Who wants to do role playing? Okay, so we can stay a little bit longer and do a little bit of role playing. All right? So, set up expectations. We were talking about that earlier, right? So, if you're taking something that another agent's not doing a good job, that you take the, the pipe, and at that point, you are setting up some expectations. And you have to really keep up to those expectations. Really, you know, uh, if not, it will really have a counterproductive. Guess what? They can do good reviews, but somebody can do also bad reviews, right? And you want to have good reviews. So it's very important that if you tell somebody, I got this list, and every week I will give you a report of what's happening on this list, and how many views we will have, you know, who clicked, who did this, who did that. You do that. If you promise them that, do it. All right? And follow through and follow up. Guys, we're done. Good job, guys. Good.